day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yeah. Believe. Yes, Believe. But institutionalization is such an indoctrination. It's a tough mindset to break. Yeah. Is that they just let a dude out for 63 years. And um, the renewing of his mind, knew. his mind is so ingrained in that to his, he, the rest of his life, I, I think it would be impossible for him to totally break free from from who he's become because of institutionalization. It's a tough sell. I mean, and I know we can look back at the Israelites and we can say this and that, but for them to come out of 400 years of bondage and accept God for what he was showing them, uh, it wasn't an easy feat. Moses had one of the toughest jobs of any leader I've ever seen in the history of mankind. Because his job was to recondition the minds of six million people that they never know nothing else and get them conditioned to see something totally different. I mean, they got psychologists and psychiatrists and everything that can't accomplish that today. You could get caught up in a cult for just a few years and need all kind of deprogramming and, and, and all kind of stuff to bring you back out of that to get you back where you need to be. So, I mean, I, 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 you all are 100% right. I just want to, to add in that it's not an easy it's not an easy defeat. It's yeah. not at all. It's very difficult. Had it not been for the if it, it not for the spirit of God, yeah, I would say it's almost impossible. Well, all, all I'm saying is, is that I believe that part of the difficulty becomes whether or not you, in the experience, have become dissatisfied with what you got. Yeah. Okay. You see, you see, you got to be conditioned to want something new. Mm. And, and, and God, God had allowed Egypt to just press them to the place where they cried out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The question come, what were they crying out for? Yeah, what were they crying out for? Apparently, Joshua and Caleb were crying out for something else. <laughs> what Joshua and Caleb were crying out for was something altogether different. And I believe that God, if given the opportunity. Yes, sir. What would otherwise remain impossible can become a matter of speaking for God. Mm. But he got to have clay that can be molded. Okay, okay, yeah. He got to have something that can be. Uh-huh. But 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 what you said though is that because that programming, even what Jim was saying, that programming, even if, what if you take the black community coming out of slavery, we was conditioned to for four hundred some years of, of of institution, and and I think the whole country probably was <laughs> conditioned, Bishop, because I think. All the stuff we're dealing with now is a remnant of it, right? There's a, a remnant of, of an institutionalized way of thinking and behavior that never allowed the church to, to do what you're talking about, to, to leave that behind. Let me give you an example. When Jesus meets Legion, okay, when he goes across them, they can meet that demon possessed man, right? that has been tormented God knows how long. Yes, sir. And the scripture said that he could be heard crying. Right. When Jesus meets him and, 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 and discerns that this fellow apparently wanted deliverance. Come on. Okay. In spite of, in spite, listen, this, this ain't no normal case here. Okay. This ain't no one, this ain't no one demon. This is a whole legion. Okay. 
in, in just a few minutes, Jesus, Jesus restored him, brought him all the way back to him, pulled him out of what he was in, brought him back to where he ought to be. So look here, come out of him. Come out. Come and they found him clothed in the right mind, sitting in the feet of Jesus. Now, you can tell he did, he, he did a thorough work because he told Jesus, let me go with you. He did, right. And, 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 I, want, listen, I want to go with you. And Jesus said, look here, I don't need you to go with me. You can be more, far more effective if you stay here and become my external witness, whereby I'll have an avenue to be next time I come. You with me? So, so it may have been impossible, but God. You know, I, not to believe what he told Abraham, when, when Sarah laughed, he says, is anything too hard for me? Is it right? Right? So I, I understand, I understand what has happened. I understand the situation that we can get ourselves in. But I also know we're dealing with the one that said, let there be light. We're dealing mm -hmm. with the one that said to, that said to, good Lord, he stood in front of that tomb and said, Lazarus? I don't think you could get no worse problem than that. Right? Because if you did, dead, I think that's the biggest problem you could ever face with trying to bring somebody back from the dead. Right? Right. But with his words. God with, with his words, he restored the dead man to life. Yes, sir. I understand. Had those Israelites been properly conditioned, having seen what and that what he testified against them, he said, I need people to see my miracle. Right, he did, right, they did, right, right. He testified them. They don't they saw my hand. Right. They saw me pour out the Red Sea. They saw me do those 10 plays. They see me bring water out of rock. I brought plays, and they still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it implies to me that somewhere in there, they could have, they could have yielded. All about God, would God not have been unjust in condemning you? Mm. Is that is that is that the same thing? We, Brother Adam had welcome. We, we was asking because was talking about it too about the you know, the guy was in prison six or seven years and. Con institutionalized and way of thinking and then the children of Israel been in you know bondage for four hundred and seven years mm. institutionalized and and then we talk about even us as African Americans been you know four hundred and seven years institutionalized and we was asking the question and, and that's where you come into it how do we get back to how do we get how do we get that institution that that thing that, that wants us to go back to bondage out of us. And and Bishop, when you when you was talking, I was thinking about with the man of the man man of the Darius, the issue was he was not disciple. Are you catching what I'm coming from? He was not disciple. Jesus left him to be a witness, but he was not Jim. Yeah. He, he was not, he was not. I mean I said, I'm saying he was not disciple. He didn't leave him in the hands to be disciple by anybody. Yeah, but you got you to go look at what Jesus said to him. Because what Jesus says to him is always sufficient for him. Okay. I want to make one more point. I'll leave Ooh, That's a good point. Uh, uh, listen, sometimes, uh, sometimes, listen, all he told, all he said was, the apostle will follow me. He didn't do no slide presentation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> he, he, he didn't show them what to come to us all about. He, he said, look, follow me. That, 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 they got to be followed. Inside of what he says to you is sufficiency for whatever you need. Whoa, Lord. Now, I, I want to say this, I'm going to be done. When Jesus meets, when Jesus sees that man at the pool in John chapter 5, why does he ask him, do you want to be made whole? I want to make sure you want to leave this condition. I, I, at least I need to understand, do you want to leave this condition? Think about that now. Yeah, this man been there for at least 30 years. And the first question he said, look here. Do you want to be made home? Oh man, that's deep. That's deep. But the question I think he asked every person we run under them, do you want you want a different, a different kind of life? Deep. I think I think he threw that the door to Egypt and said, Do you want to come out of Egypt? Deep. Deep. Do, do you do listen, do you have you been brought to a place where you want something more than what you've experienced? No. Wow. You can just you can be in prison all your life, but if you ain't never brought, been brought to a place where you you realize that's something missing. 
Yes, sir. Right. Yes, I can't put my finger on it, but I want something beyond this. I think that becomes the place where man is brought in confrontation with God. When he brought, and this is why we, this is how you not make false converts. When you talk to folks who've been brought to a place, but they realize that there's got to be something more mm -hmm. to life than what I've already experienced. Yeah. Wow.